So the second part, there's a question that is asked, how will the world end? And this is the way Jesus answers that. Because who would want to stay here forever? If that were possible. How will the world end? Can what has no beginning really end? So right away, Jesus is indicating to you that you're asking a very strange question. The way you're asking that question, you're indicating to Jesus that you think it's real. You want to know how what you think is real is going to end. And his answer is, how can what has no beginning really end? The world will end in an illusion as it began. So that there is an ending is also an illusion. It's a part of the illusion. When there is no illusion, you don't have an idea in your mind when, how will the illusion end. And only something that is part of the illusion would have that thought. Yet, will its ending be an illusion of mercy? An illusion of mercy. There will be kindness in your story. The illusion of forgiveness, complete, excluding no one, limitless in gentleness, will cover it, hiding all evil, concealing all sin, and ending guilt forever. So ends the world that guilt had made. Not God, guilt. For now it has no purpose and is gone. The father of illusions is the belief that they have a purpose, that they serve a need or gratify a want. Perceived as purposeless, they are no longer seen. Their uselessness is recognized, and they are gone. How but in this way are all illusions ended? They have been brought to truth. Truth saw them not. It merely overlooked the meaningless. Jesus is talking here about an activity that's going to occur in your mind. It's going to occur in your mind. You cannot resist this forever. Until forgiveness is complete, the world does have a purpose. It becomes the home in which forgiveness is born and where it grows and becomes stronger and more all-embracing. Here is it nourished, for here it is needed. A gentle savior born where sin was made and guilt seemed real. Here is his home, for here there is need of him indeed. He brings the ending of the world with him. It is his call, God's teacher's answer, turning to him in silence to receive his word. God's teachers received the call to be the Savior so that the world can find its ending. The world will end when all things in it have been rightly judged by his judgment, the Savior's judgment. The world will end with the benediction of holiness upon it, not anger, not disappointment, not your rage, but your benediction of holiness. your love manifesting in this world. 
not your rejection of it, your love of it, not your belief that it is real, which would change your love, but you're loving so you allow it to be an illusion. When not one thought of sin remains, the world is over. It will not be destroyed, nor attacked, nor even touched. It will merely cease to seem to be. It will disappear. After it has been completely forgiven. Which means after you love the world. 